Hi guys, welcome to this session. I am very excited today to tell you about how the impact and sustainability space intersects with blockchain technology and really how these two together can be part of getting us into utopia. I like to say that we have a path to utopia, we have a path to dystopia, we choose this one and we choose to build things and leverage technology and produce innovation on this side of things. Now, in the next 15 minutes, we're going to explore how blockchain technology really intersects pretty much all areas of the impact space. And by the way, the impact space has many definitions. I run a company called Top Tier Impact, which is a global community of impact and sustainability investors, entrepreneurs, corporate leaders, media personalities. We have our own definition of impact. The way we think about impact is as a global paradigm change towards sustainability and equality for all economic sectors and for all countries in the world. So this really is a shift that affects sectors as a whole. So it's not just like this part of the energy sector that is clean, it's the entire energy sector shifting towards sustainability. It's not just this part of the agriculture industry um, that is regenerative, it's the entire agriculture industry being sustainable. That is how we think about it. And when it comes to blockchain technology, I have now been in the space for over eight years. I first discovered blockchain technology uh, back when I was at Oxford and I kind of studied governance. I was in technology, I was in finance. It was at a perfect intersection because my passion from governance came from thinking, how can we have better systems in the world? How can we improve our current systems? And alongside those lines, I wrote papers comparing corporate governance systems around the world, comparing like the pros and cons. And really what you would see was just a reflection of the culture and the values of each country, right? And the governance code. And so blockchain technology at its core is an innovation ground for new governance models. This is a step beyond what the internet has been. The internet has been an innovation ground for business models, for startups, right? The blockchain is not just that because the blockchain adds an extra element of being able to really create power, create dynamics, create incentives through the core of the technology. So let's look at that for a moment. Let's look at the core of blockchain technology. And I wanna do it through a little story like we're gonna we're gonna get to this like backwards now guys let's imagine a world in which politicians businesses and people in general cannot interact with each other by lying cannot interact with each other by just being motivated by their selfish ego and by their insecurities but they need to optimize in the benefit of the collective it's not only about a zero-sum game like we say in economics it's not just about winner takes it all. It's not just about me surviving as an individual, right? No matter how bad the rest of the world goes, no matter if climate change happens or if things are unsustainable, I'm just trying to survive myself. It's no longer that kind of world. It's a world in which this doesn't make any sense. It's a world in which optimizing for myself means optimizing for the whole. Because at the core, I just understand I am part of the whole. And I need the whole to survive. Because by the way, guys, in the theory of evolution, human evolution, it's been proven that we don't evolve as a single species. We evolve as ecosystems in balance with each other. Now, what has happened over time? Nature has always optimized for ecosystems. And when you look at, for instance, the savanna, right? You have lions, you have gazelles, like lions catch gazelles. It's what they feed on. Gazelles evolve, they get a little bit faster. Lions evolve, they also get a little bit faster and they stay in balance. If suddenly lions had access to weapons, like to technology to enhance themselves, and they were to say, fantastic, let's take advantage of this. Let's kill all the gazelles. We're going to have a big banquet, a big feast. In that process, they would kill themselves because their ecosystem would go out of balance. As humans, we invented weapons, we invented technology, we started observing our thoughts and our brains in a way that is an extra step in evolution. And so we suddenly put ourselves on top of the food chain. 
but we got out of balance. We don't have feedback groups anymore. That ecosystem is not monitored. So if I do something unsustainable here, on the other side of the world, or you know, even like my neighbor next door, doesn't matter. I don't see that in my feedback, right? We're very isolated like that. And so what we're talking about here is to bring that balance back, bring that data, and bring a way in which, like I was just telling you before, we are going to be able to say, optimizing for my own interests automatically optimizes for everybody else's interests. Now, how does that sound? Now let's dive into blockchain technology and let's talk about how exactly this transparency, this incentive realignment and these I optimize for myself and by definition for the collective happens. And I want to start with another example. So let's take car riding app Uber, right? So I go to Uber and I say, you know, I just had a car ride and it told me it was going to take 30 minutes and it took 45 minutes. Do you have Uber as a company, your best interest at heart, your shareholders interest at heart, or do you just have my best interest at heart? I think the answer in the world today is very simple. Companies have a shareholder maximization matter. They need to maximize for their shareholders. They need to maximize for themselves and their profits. And so for customers around the world in most industries, it's not even a question to say, well, I would like you to just optimize for my own interests, like for myself, right? For all your customers, because they know how it works. And so there is something called brand value and brand value is trust and brand value is something quite abstract, actually. Brand value is really something that gets proven like anecdotally over and over by the company seeming to be in line with their values, with their principles. It's not measurable. And the degrees of success and the degrees in which it stays consistent over time uh, are not very impressive. So when I go to Uber and I ask them that, I kind of already know the answer. Now, what if there was a technology through which I could say, well, Uber, if you use this technology, I will know that you're maximizing for my own best interest. So here is where we enter blockchain technology, because by making everything part of a distributed system, a collective system where there is no longer just Uber with the data saying, you trust what I say, like, that's it. But really the data is replicated across many databases and everybody knows what the truth is. The truth is no longer what Uber tells me or what Uber does as a result of what they assume the truth to be. The truth is shared. The truth is collected. The truth is known. And so at this point, when I can see the data as a customer and I know, okay, that ride is going to be more like 45 minutes. Fine. The algorithms were tweaking a little bit. That cannot happen anymore because everybody knows. Now, when you think about this and about how it can be pragmatically implemented in the real world, guys, because we're idealists here, we're pragmatic as well. And so for along those lines, the beauty of it is that we can insert this in the current system. We don't need to say everybody needs to become very good, very like, sustainability driven and everybody needs to have, you know, the best interest of this planet at heart. We don't even need to say that because what happens in industries, like in Uber's case, is that you have a few new entrants in the market. In fact, you have a lot of competitors, right? They're all trying to take Uber's place. And in order to take Uber's place, they need to deliver superior value to Uber's customers. That's how they're going to get customers, right? And that's how innovation happens, by the way. Innovation is a continuous finding ways to deliver more values, finding ways to improve the status quo, and then taking things to the next level. And when this kind of very disruptive innovation happens, there are big turmoils in a market and there are changes to who the dominant companies in a market are, because the reality is that the dominant companies have got nothing to gain from certain improvements like this, right? Because if you go to Uber and say, well, great Uber, now we can adopt this technology. 
suddenly we're all going to be fully aligned. Everything is going to be transparent. All the incentives are going to be in line, right? Every stakeholder, whether it's the customers, the drivers, uh, the suppliers, obviously the employer, the employees, everybody is going to have their interests fully aligned. Uber will say, our profit is going to go down because we were capturing extra profit by not fully being in this crazy transparent system. Like we have our algorithms, we have our own ways to go about it. Like we have valid reasons why things are like that. And that's fair enough, right? Companies today are capturing extra profit by not being fully, fully aligned with all stakeholders. And it's not, it's not just their customers, it's the environment, it's like the communities that they're part of, right? Because there is a cost in not being sustainable. It's just that they can externalize that cost. And this in economics is called negative externalities. So this technology can remove negative externalities. But let's go back to Uber. So Uber is going to say, mm, I'm a company. I need to maximize for my shareholders. This is going to drive down my profit. I don't see the point. So what about the new entrants who are like, I'm looking for a way to get customers away from Uber. I want to grow in this market. I want to deliver more value because that's how I'm going to grow in this market. I have nothing to lose. So these new entrants are going to be very incentivized to adopt technologies that can show customers of the incumbent companies that they are delivering superior value. Now, guys, you might say, great, this sounds awesome. Why is it not happening already? Why don't I have that option already? And this is where you guys come in. Because right now in the phase of this technology, in this phase of early innovation, there is a big education gap to be bridged. The education gap means that we can't quite go to customers of Uber yet and say, do you understand how this works? It's gonna be better for you. It's very complicated. There are a lot of steps to be bridged before it becomes so clear and obvious why it's better, right? And those steps to be bridged will be bridged by the companies who enter these markets, leveraging blockchain technology and explaining in a clear and simple way how these makes things different. And the more this happens, guys, the more it catches velocity, the more it catches speed and the easier it will be for other markets to follow. There is a little bit of a domino effect. And it's something that we're seeing in crypto markets today when there are companies like PayPal saying, oh, we're going to use, we're going to accept Bitcoin, like we're going to be like set up for that. And suddenly a lot of other big companies are like, oh, they are doing it now. It seems mature enough. It seems safe enough. Like that's reassuring to see. Maybe we should do it as well. Hold on. If we don't do it, we're going to be left behind. Maybe we should really do it right now. Right? So there is this continuous catch up that happens. And that is on the early stage side of innovation for new companies, for new startups, what is going to happen as well in terms of being able to adopt this technology and simply explain customers how this makes a difference. And these guys is at the core of Blockchain Mavericks, my other company. Blockchain Mavericks has a book coming out in several weeks, which is completely focused on concrete applications of blockchain technology to improve all these industries, to get us to progress forward in a way that is positive for everybody. And we're all about practice and less theory, right? And so we did all of this by interviewing the who is who of the crypto and blockchain space, having them talk about how exactly they see the world changing through this, why they're building their companies. Many of them are like, very big companies at this point have been pioneering blockchain technology to this point in time and really talk about what kind of world exactly we are empowering and how exactly we're doing that. And the book is tokenized as well. There is a community and the community is all about bridging the gap between the education side of people already in the space understanding this and the ones who are entering it, especially smart people who want to help build a better world through blockchain technology. And so I encourage you guys to keep learning, keep learning about the specific ways 
in which this technology can make a difference and just naturally connect the dots because to me, we are moving into a world that is getting increasingly polymathic. If you look at blockchain technologies, a polymathic technology. What do I mean by polymathic, by the way? Polymathic means that it brings different fields together. So you're no longer just like, oh, I know economics, that's it, right? Like there is a lot of other things. In blockchain technology, you have cryptography coming together with economics, right? Like when you look at even companies like Apple bringing together hardware with great design, Right. And suddenly everybody's like, oh, computers don't have to look ugly. That's great news. So the word going forward, and especially with a polymathic technology like the blockchain, is going to have more of this connecting the dots at the intersection of different fields coming together. So explore your curiosity, explore it. Keep in mind how this technology works. So as you go about thinking of problems, that are meaningful, problems out there that deserve to be solved, that can improve the world, you can also tie it back to your understanding of how this technology works. And then you can have a light bulb moment. I'd love to hear from you guys. You can find me on Instagram at Alessa Berg. You can find me on LinkedIn, Alessandra Solberger. I would love to see you guys getting up to amazing things. I would love to see you guys being part of the road towards utopia and applying all of these amazing innovation for good purpose. Because the reality, guys, is that technology is neutral. Technology can only be as good as the people who apply it. Those are the values that get imprinted in the technology. So let's imprint amazing values in this technology and let's drive things forward. So to recap, guys, the education process starts with you. You start to educate yourself and understand exactly the ways in which you can take this technology and you can apply it to the health and well-being sector, to the energy sector, to climate applications, software climate applications, to AI-driven solutions for sustainability and sustainable supply chains, right? Transparency in various industries. What are you going to do with it? and really bringing together your understanding of a specific area where your company might be working it, where your startups, like where your fund, and bringing it together with the power that this technology delivers. Because this technology is not about, I'm building a blockchain technology company. No, this technology is an enabler. So it really says you go in whatever industry you're part of and you make it better. You make it go on the road to utopia which is better for everybody involved, not just for our planet, like not just for our ecosystems, for ourselves and for our health and for our community.